Hey everyone, look who's here. It's Jordan. What's up? You guys might know him from my Instagram, at Sajor. He shoots a lot of my photos, but I'm taking him with me today to shoot a video. I'm going to Stephanie Gottlieb, who is a jeweler in New York City. She is the woman who my engagement ring was inspired by. So I saw this ring basically on her Instagram, and I sent it to Michael, <laughs> and Michael didn't know what to do. So he took the design to another jeweler and he had it made. So this is not Stephanie's, but I'm obsessed with her. So I'm gonna work with her to create my wedding band. Michael and I already had one appointment with Stephanie. So this is appointment number two and Michael is at school. So he's not here, but I'm going in to try on wedding bands and I'm taking you with me and Jordan. Checking in, in the lobby. So Jordan shoots all my Instagram stuff, pretty much. That's what I do. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Good, a good amount of it, a good amount of it. And he is a big ball of talent. Thanks, Luke. You're welcome. budget that people would come in having when it comes to wedding rings? So for the engagement ring, it really does span. I would say our bridal starts around 10,000. Um, all of our settings are handmade, which can be expensive. So to achieve a beautiful ring and allow for a really nice size diamond, um, we do start around 10. But I would say our average price point is like 20 to 30. What's like the highest price ring you've ever sold? We just did one that was like 200. How many carats? It was six. Oh. So that was like a super high quality six carat stone. And for bands, mm -hmm. are we talking in the $200 range or a $2,000 range? So bands really can range. If you're wanting just like the simplest gold band, it could actually be in the $200 range. And there really is something for everybody. Um, but I would say the average price point is somewhere between two and five. And, yeah, and that means you can get like a nice diamond eternity band, something that will be timeless and classic and last forever. You have things for everybody. We do, yeah, we really do. Great, we let's can. start trying on. Let's do it. We created a YouTube page which kind of breaks down like the four C's and it's very different for each shape, so which is why we kind of broke it down that way. The different? The four C's. Four C's? So oh, that's I had a guess. <laughs> Go for it. Carrots. Mm -hmm. Cut. Yep. Uh, cloudiness. <laughs> Clarity, but sure. And the fourth one will be... Oh my gosh, what's the fourth C? 
color. Are diamonds not all clear? So they are, but there are sort of varying degrees of how clear they are. Okay. And it's kind of about this absence or presence of yellow when you're looking at a white diamond. And most people wouldn't even realize this when they're looking at a stone. They just think, oh, what a beautiful sparkly diamond, and, and that's great. Um, but there actually are kind of variations of how yellow a stone can be. And is yellow good or bad? Yellow would be bad if you're looking for a white diamond. There are yellow diamonds that are intentionally yellow with like a more saturated yellow, but when you're looking at a white stone, you want to go with as white as possible. Cut is the shape of the stone, and cut also refers to how the stone is actually manufactured. So there are excellent cut stones which have ideally cut proportions to maximize light performance. Mm -hmm. And then there are poorly cut stones which are sort of generally flat, kind of lifeless and dull, and that's of course something you'd want to avoid. So clarity is, are there any imperfections in the stone? How many are there? Where are they located in the stone? And kind of how easy are they to see? Probably about a week after I was engaged, I accidentally smashed it on the garbage chute. Oh God. <laughs> and I, of course, looked at it really closely and I said, there's a little black smudge on it. And I thought I scratched the diamond, but then I showed it to Stephanie and she looked at it with a little eyepiece up close and she told me that there was just a little imperfection in it that was always there yes. from the start. Yes. And now I love my imperfection. <laughs> totally. So it's kind of like a snowflake. Like on the surface, they all look the same, but if you were to look under a microscope, they're all very different. Right. And so every stone is entirely unique and these imperfections do make your stone one of a kind. So really what we're looking for is a stone that's considered eye clean meaning we can't see it with our naked eye unless we're trying very, very hard. How do people decide what carrot to get? They try on different sizes? Yeah, so I mean, budget usually dictates what carrots we're looking at. Um, and then within a budget, we can say either you can look at, let's say, one and a half carrots in much higher quality, so higher color, higher clarity, or we can look at two carrots but compromise on the color and clarity to get you to that size. Wow. Yeah, a lot to learn. Oh, I know, so it's like a very scientific process. But so how did you learn all this? So I took a job with a diamond wholesale company, like straight out of college. I was supposed to be there two months. I, of course, loved it. I ended up staying for five years. And I think the best way to learn diamonds is really just to work with them and, you know, kind of learn the intricacies. And it takes time. I think when it comes to bands, something that I find interesting is that there really are no rules. Mm -hmm. You can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. But I do get the vibe. Like I've heard from a lot of people that I might not wear this engagement ring for my whole life and that I should ideally choose a band that can stand alone. So when I came and I looked at some of the rings that you have, my first thought was I wanted this band to be really special, which yeah. is why I was thinking of coming in to do a custom design and I have something floating around my head that I need your expertise on. Okay. I have a rose gold mm -hmm. ring here. Yeah. What are the rules on mixing and matching metals? There are no rules. You can do whatever you want. Um, and you have like a nice stack of rose on your other hand too. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of add this platinum in and that will be like a, you know, a standout piece, right. which I like. Wow. So much to think about. <laughs>